Hey, welcome back to another Riding in the Dark video. Um, I'm your host, Tim Wagner. Never thought of myself as a host before, but I'm your host. Today we're going to talk about a horror writer's self-assessment, um, a way for you to kind of, you know, get a better read on what is it that you would like to be or become as a horror writer. How do you be more individual? How do you kind of um, stand out from the rest of the pack? Um, how do you avoid just being another person who writes about zombies and werewolves and the same stuff that everybody else writes about? So you can do this, you know, not I mean, do it in your head while you're listening to the video, but you can also go ahead and like stop the video and write stuff down if you want to or listen to the video once all the way through, come back, listen to it, write stuff down again. Um, but this is like an exercise that uh, you can do or maybe multiple exercises kind of cobbled together. So the first thing I want you to think about is what kind of things do you pay attention to in the world? When you're just out and about, what kind of things catch your attention? Um, do you notice people? Do you notice people who are talking? Do you notice animals? Do you notice sounds? Um, do you notice signs? Do you notice colors? Um, one of the things I sometimes notice are like odd signs or odd bumper stickers or things like that. I don't know what they mean or weird vanity plates. Um, something that I don't expect to see that's in a place I don't expect to see it. Like maybe a squashed banana in the, on the sidewalk in a, in a city and it's just there and everybody's walking over it. Um, you know, so what happens when you do this is that you get an idea of what sort of things strike you as interesting or strike you as odd. And then of course, throughout the course of your day, you either take pictures of these things with your phone, you jot them down on your phone real quick, like in a notepad app, so that you have these kind of things that are what you are interested in, what you pay attention to, what strike you as weird or strange or interesting, that nobody else in the world would think that, or certainly nobody was there in the world at the same time when you saw those things. Um, so, and what kind of things in general strike you as weird or strange? Um, is it like weird medical stuff, like, you know, uh, medical anomalies, or is it like stuff from, you know, older times where you look at like, I don't know, we were talking about medicine, like older medical instruments and they look so strange to you. Um, it, is it um, insects? They strike you as strange. All the different, you know, not the, just the way they look, but all the different ways that they live and hunt and feed and reproduce. Um, anything that strikes you as weird or strange. Uh, cults. Um, uh, I like I, I like to watch like uh, weird conspiracy shows about UFOs and things that I know is not real, but I'm fascinated by not only the stories people tell, but by the people themselves. You know how how what they're fascinated with and why they seem to be so you know fervent sometimes about these things. Um, I'm interested in like uh, uh, unsolved mysteries. I think those things are kind of interesting, um, whether they're down to earth ones or whether they're ones that you know have some kind of weird sort of supposedly supernatural angle or anything like that. So you know the things that strike you as weird um, that you notice behaviors that. Um, I see people doing that. I can't figure out why. There, there's probably a reason for it, but I don't know what it is. For example, once I walked into a McDonald's and there was a guy that had a giant pile, I mean a pile of cheeseburger wrappers, and he was eating another cheeseburger. I don't know if he had eaten all of them. He was alone. I don't know if anybody else was there with him eating and they just left the wrappers. I don't know why they were all crumpled up and piled up, but it struck me as so odd. I used it as an image in a short story eventually. Um, of course, I had to write it down or I would have forgot about it. Um, so it, what sort of news or nonfiction articles are you drawn to? Are you drawn to news about crime? Are you drawn to science news? Um, I like articles that are about like weird concepts in physics that kind of tell us that reality may be different than we think. Or like, you know, articles about how the whole universe is a simulation and we can finally prove it. Now, those seem like science fiction ideas, but I like to use them in my horror. Um, to me, they're more cosmic ideas than they are science. Um, that's just the way they strike me. And they work really well sometimes as a deeper kind of background in some of my, especially my horror novels, but I'll use them in short stories too. Um, if you don't normally, and this would count for YouTube videos too, um, could be anything that in terms of content that's not fiction, not movies, not books, not comics, whatever, uh, but nonfiction content that you'd be drawn to. And then of course, you pay attention to that stuff, record that stuff. So you have it later. Um, what sort of images, photographs, artwork are you drawn to? Um, what kind of imagery, you know, just grabs your attention? 
Um, is it paintings? If it's photos, is it black and white? If the photos, what are the photos of? Are they the fo photos of animals? Um, I like photos that sometimes you can't figure out what they are at first, like a little mystery and you have to look at them. Um, I especially like the ones where somebody's like, there's something there you got to see and you look at it and you can't find anything and it's probably a joke on you. But I love looking through those things, trying to figure out like, you know, what's wrong with them or whatever. Um, really dramatic historical shots or it could be just shots anybody puts up really that kind of tell a story or hint at a larger story, things that spark my imagination. Um, so spent, you might have to spend some time if you're not sure about this, just looking through some photos on social media, maybe doing an image search. Uh, like on interesting photos, weird photos, interesting art, weird art, uh, scary art, dark art, bizarre art, same for photos, uh, just put scary, dark, bizarre in front of it. And just to see which ones, you know, kind of things grab your attention. Uh, mysterious photos, mysterious art. Um, and you'll start getting a feel for like the images that impact you. So, you know, you won't be using images like werewolves and full moons and haunted houses that everybody else uses. Um, I don't know, you might be attracted to or intrigued by photos of wheelbarrows. I don't know why. And you'd end up with a wheelbarrow as an image in a horror short story or maybe somehow in your novel or whatever. Um, or if you're an artist, you know, you might do some scary painting of a wheelbarrow. Uh, however, you could treat anything can be turned into horror uh, depending on how you present it. But the thing about a wheelbarrow is who else is going to make this a horror thing? But everybody's going to be doing skulls and stuff like that. I mean, you can see from my little pops there a lot of them are just icons that are they're cool but you know you don't want to be a person who's doing the three thousandth time that somebody's written a you know a vampire story you could be the person the first time to write the the weird wheelbarrow from hell story um uh so other things to take a look for is you know i call it your horror landscape but it's really just experiences you can draw on from your horror fiction uh, like, for example, I've lived most of my life in southwest Ohio. I've lived a few other places, but mostly, you know, around here, central and southwest Ohio. So most of my fiction is set there just because I grew up here and know it. Um, I've spent, uh, I've taught English at a community college for 20 years and taught part-time at various schools 10 years before that. So I've spent my life around colleges and schools, you know, students, teacher, um, I have two adult daughters, I got an ex-wife who's a psychologist, uh, I've been married to my second wife for over a decade, uh, and she's an artist and does all kinds of stuff, you know, she's a, she's a falconer, she's uh, uh, used to train horses, and there's all kinds of stuff about horses, she's a gardener, she has a million interests, she's a genius and knows tons of stuff. Um, so all those things is kind of like the landscape I have to draw on to pull things into my fiction in different ways. And of course, you know, if I spent more time, I would come up with a lot more. Um, so I do tend to write stories about parents and daughters. I do tend to write stories about spouses that are, for whatever reasons, distant. I do tend to write, um, I draw on the, the interesting things around me. So I draw on like bird stuff that my wife tells me, you know, cool stuff about raptors and how they act. So knowing your horror, la horror landscape gives you an idea of what you can draw on that, you know, nobody else can. Certainly the combination of all those things together. Uh, probably you're the only person in the world, maybe the history of the world, that has that combination. And it's a great place to go to if, if you're looking for material to draw on to write original fiction. Um, and then what's your horror philosophy? Um, so this is like an overall worldview that can form a foundation for your horror fiction. So the stereotype in horror philosophy is good versus evil. Uh, you know, sometimes it's based on Christian myth, so it's like, you know, uh, Christian God versus Christian devil, um, with humanity in the middle. Uh, but I don't do that. Uh, one of the things that always strikes me is, is a huge question for humanity is we know that we're going to die. We know the whole universe is going to die. Uh, you know, entropy always wins. There's nothing you can do. So how do you live with that? How do you keep going? How do you find meaning? Uh, and so that's, you know, in a big way, at the core of an awful lot of my stories. Uh, plus, in a lot of ways, that entropy is the breakdown of things. So I write about the breakdown of people's minds, their spirits, their world around them, of time itself. Um, and how do you deal with that? What, how, what effect does that have on you? What does effect it have on the world, on uh, other people, friends and family? Um, and I find that uh, a, a really rich and deep well to keep drawing from. Um, so, you know, this does not have to be a philosophy that you actually believe, like you might, somebody might believe a religion. It just has to be something that is like a big question, maybe, 
about life, the universe, well, and everything, well, <laughs> to Douglas Adams, uh, that the idea kind of frightens you or kind of scares you. Um, that's big enough to kind of underlay a lot of your horror fiction. Doesn't mean you always have to write stories about it, but it really kind of gives you, uh, it'll have, give you a different vision than just good versus evil. And at its core, what you write about may still impact people, like a negative thing versus a positive thing. But because it's not the same old, same old, it's gonna have a much bigger impact on them. So, all right, so if you've listened to this and you, you've been thinking about stuff, now's a good time to click off the video or wait for me to say goodbye. Now's the time to click off the video and go ahead and do a horror assessment or you know, replay the whole thing, have a notebook with you, have your word program open on your computer and go ahead and you know, type some of these answers up. Don't feel like you have to get them all done today. This can be a project that you go, that you know, in some ways lasts a lifetime because of course you change and add experiences to you to everything. But, you know, maybe take a few days, maybe a couple weeks or whatever to kind of go back and revisit these things. Because what you want to do is like, it's like getting juice out of an orange. <laughs> you want to squeeze every drop out that you can go ahead and use. So, um, you know, good luck with your horror assessment. Um, let me know in the comments if you try it and if it worked out for you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you do. Uh, and other than that, see you all next time. Bye now.